It's okay. not my one. It's my volunteer. Yeah, yeah, it's my my work, but it's volunteer. But I'm trying to <laughs> try to fix it. I don't know how to do it. With the Zoom. So we have one student from uh, from Peru. So we have Ricardo. Maria is with us. Isabel Veliz, I don't know who Isabel. Hello, uh, are you ready? But it's fine, you know, if it's even if it's uh, clear, it's fine. Uh, yeah, so, but I don't know, but, but because you are recording, I'm, I'm wondering about that. Uh, but, no, we don't okay. see much, we, we see almost nothing. It's fine, it's fine. So, so Diana, you ready? Okay. Uh, yes, I, I, one second. Okay, I, I think I think I I find to how to fix it. Yeah, you have to take out the background. Okay. So now we see okay. we see we see your room. Okay. Uh, okay, so we, that's we perfect. Okay. 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 So, okay, so thank Diana, you. Uh, first of all, I wanted to congratulate you because uh, so I've not talked to you for like about uh, three weeks, I believe, uh, because you have been accepted recently. So to to which program have you been accepted finally, uh, Diana? Okay, good morning everyone. I'm Diana Tallero. I'm from Peru. I'm being accepted to four programs. So the uh, University of Ohio, uh, Penn State University, Boston University, and Rochester Simon Business School. Okay. And with some of them, you got a scholarship, no? That's what uh, uh, you told me. With some of them, you got a scholarship. Yes. Yes, and, fi and finally yeah. I chose uh, Pennsylvania State University because I got a full tuition waiver, so 100% of scholarship. 100% scholarship. Okay, so so very good. So so basically, uh, Diana, I, I know you well because we have worked together, but uh, the other students here do not know you very well. So, uh, so so what what is your background? Can you can you introduce yourself to the others so that they sure. they, they can appreciate who you are, what you have done? Yeah. Sure. Well, I'm an industrial engineer. Uh, I, you told me that it's someone from Peru here, so I'm from University of Lima. I have also a specialization in marketing. I'm, I'm not that young because I have over nine years of work experience um, in supply chain industry. I work for global companies as well as for logistic operators, so the, most of my experience is in supply chain. Um, I decided to pursue a full-time MBA because I want to, you know, to boost my experience and to develop uh, strategic skills in order to raise a strategic position uh, in, in, the, in a global company. So I decided uh, to pursue an MBA because of that. And in addition, I want uh, uh, that the MBA program that I choose, I, I want that they have a supply chain specialization or supply chain concentrations because I really love supply chain and I want to continue to develop my career. So the first that I look in a, in a program and it's why I choose this university is because of the supply chain that uh, specializations that the university offers. Okay, so so very good. But the way they are they are more coming. Um, so, um, so Jenna, so I understand. So you're you're an engineer with, uh, and after uh, your engineering studies, you have decided to to go to another institute to study marketing. Um, yes. It's so yeah. So so tell me, uh, Jenna. So you know that we have, I would say, two sets of our students from Peru who study in America, one set in Europe. Why have you chosen, for instance, the United States? Because I, I had the opportunity to live three months in Boston in 2018, and I, I had the opportunity to be involved with the American culture, and I really like it, and I really like the programs, and I really like the opportunity that the study in uh, American university can give to you. Uh, also, uh, most of the American university offer a two years of programs, and there is a period of internships, uh, three months of internship uh, between one, uh, the first and the second year. And I think this is a good opportunity to uh, learn for uh, companies abroad. So it's it's something that I really uh, got interest in. So I decided to pursue my MBA in in, in United States. Okay, yeah, because you spent uh, three months, I believe in Boston. When yes. was it, like five years ago? When was it? Uh... Uh, yeah. Four years ago. Four years ago. Three and a half to be to be exactly. Yes, okay. three years and a half. 
And tell me, so, so your objective is, uh, is uh, by the way, is Penn State a STEM program? Is it a STEM program, Penn State? Uh, yes, I mean, the program is not STEM, but you can, uh, you can take a second degree in business analytics uh, in, the five, in the five semester. So for, if you study five months more, you will have two degrees. And with, two de with this two degree, it's a STEM, uh, STEM program. And you can apply for like extend your visa for two years to continue your OPT period for two years more. So it means that you, you intend to spend minimum five years. So something like five years in the States between two years between with the MBA, another five five months for the extra program and plus uh, the STEM program. So of course, and after yes. that, you will probably stay uh, in uh, in the US. Um, yeah, so far that's not my plans. That's, that's what you plan uh, to study there. So, uh, so tell me, so you got accepted to, to uh, Fisher, uh, Kestrom, uh, Penn State, and another one. Yes, uh, Simon. So then, Simon, uh, Rochester, okay, can I even my writing? So, so you have decided to take Penn State because he, you receive a 100% scholarship, but are there other reasons why you have uh, picked up uh, yes, uh, because, uh, Penn State? Yes, because... Yes, uh, Penn State is the number one university for supply chain. And I, when I've been admitted to this four university, I introduced myself to many students. Uh, I could uh, talk with many alumni as well as students from the university to, to talk about the culture, to talk about uh, what is uh, most of the students got internship or full-time offers. And I also study the employment report. I think that is something very valuable because it gives you an overview of the university. And in Penn State, 45% of the class got an internship or full-time offer in supply chain. So I, the networking also is very important and I want to continue my career in supply chain. So uh, uh, compared with the other business school, well, 40% 40, 40 of the students got uh, employment in finance. Uh, I, I decided to take also Penn State because of that, of the specialization in supply chain and because I want to continue my career in supply chain. But again, it's, it's something depends of any of the, if, if any one of you, because it depends on what you really want. I want to continue my career in supply chain, but if, what, if I maybe choose to switch my actual background, to switch my actual career, maybe I will choose another university uh, because uh, I want to, you know, if I want finance, I will for sure to Simon. But it was because it's what I really want. I want to continue my career in supply chain. Um, the other reason is the networking that Penn State gives because it's a big university. And uh, you are connected with not only with your classmates, but also with uh, all the uh, students uh, for Penn State. And in addition, the small class, uh, Penn State is a class of 60 uh, students. Uh, are different from the other university that the class is, is much bigger. Uh, it's only 60 people. So I think like to find an internship, to get connected with all your classmates, uh, it's going to be easier. Okay, yeah, very good. I know basically, so Jana, you remember, so we, we met, when did we, when, when did we start to work? It was what was in June, July of last year? Yes. Yeah? June, July. June 2021, yes, okay, last year. So, so can you explain to, to our student how it works? Because you have used a specific process, okay? Uh, and maybe they, they, they want to understand uh, how you have, uh, uh, how you have uh, moved forward uh, to this success. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, it's a, I want to mention that uh, I, I, I apply with GMAT waiver because for me, it's, uh, I mean, I have over nine years of experience. And if you review this university, you have the option to apply with GMAT waiver. So the first, the first that I look for uni, in the universities is the one that offers the option to the students to apply with GMAT waiver. I mean, with no GMAT. Uh, there are many considerations. Uh, for example, you have uh, you need over seven years of work experience for Penn State. From other universities, you you need over five years of work experience. So you have to to, to take a look of the requirements of GMAT waiver. Uh, then I choose the uni. I don't want. I mean, I look from the ranking between the position twenty and forty in the Financial Times, uh, because I want to a scholarship. Uh, I want to I want a scholarship. Um, I am. Um, 
you know, I'm pretty sure that if I apply, maybe the top 10 is going to be no impossible, but more difficult to, 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 be, to earn a, a award of a scholarship. Um, so I decided to apply between the position between 20 and 14 in the Financial Times. And other, other, other thing that I look is the ones that give me specialization in supply chain. So I figured it out that Fisher and Penn State are top universities in supply chain. So I chose this one. And I chose Simon because I, I really like the university. I, I, got, I had the opportunity to assist a fear here in Peru in 2018. A, a MBA MBA tour, I think it was the name, and meet the one of the director of that mission in Simon. So it was very nice girl, and uh, the program also got a STEM designation. It's something that I really interested as an international student. Uh, it gives you, it gives to you the opportunity to work two years more with OPT in United States. So I choose Simon and um, I choose Questron because I live in Boston and I like the environment in Boston and also Boston University is a good university. So yes, and after that, I start my process, my application process, and I work with Hubert. Uh, we work with the essays. I think that's very important because uh, the essays is your experience. The essays is your personality, is what you want to say. I, I, I am the person that I consider that anyone can do your essays, but a good coach like Hubert can help you to address and to put in a very good way what you, what you are thinking and what you want to put in your essays. Um, so we work with our essays, also with letters of recommendations. That is something very important. Um, I, I work with Hubert, uh, with Dr. Hubert, the layers of recommendation that I think uh, were cru crucial. Uh, again, it's your information, it's your experience. You have to work with your recommender, but Hubert can help you to address how to, you know, the, put the, the layers in a good way. Like uh, maybe you are not considered something. He say, oh, no, look this, um, take this off. It's like something, it's it's not relevant, put this. So I think that is important because give you a, a, a sense of your essays and make you a powerful essay. So I think that was crucial that the, the help of, of Dr. Hubert, he worked directly with me. I have have that that opportunity and yes that and then is is the process basically like uh, you have to apply and you have to to wait for an interview i got uh, i got interviewed in all the universities yeah. and after the interview i received my my admissions offer so it, it's a process like it was between it, it's it was six months long yeah. between i start with Hubert and i received my admission offer from the university it's then it took me six months so yes, what I, what I want to say is that what I really like uh, with uh, with Diana is that she took some time off. Huh? You you agree, uh, Diana, yeah. to be to be focused on your on yes, your project. Part, part, yeah, but, yes. but it was uh, because of, of the COVID. Huh? You wanted to to switch job and you took the opportunity to work on the application. And you saw that every time I was calling Diana, she said I'm not available for this for that because she was always attending a webinar. So she's super knowledgeable. So because. It's true that a lot of you, you will choose your school because of the ranking, okay? Uh, and uh, Diana, uh, unlike many other students, she chose the school because, of course, of the ranking. All the schools that she has picked up are in the top 100 of the FT, but also according to uh, the to, to other criteria, uh, two other criteria in your case, and Diana, there was the GMAT waiver, there was, of course, the specialization in supply chain, and also the, the STEM program, because of course, it's true that for all of you, uh, don't just by ranking, by, by your project, okay? And Diana wanted to say, I want to be able to 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 stay uh, before coming back. She will tell you about her project to, to Peru. But of course, it doesn't make sense that you study two years in the US if you cannot stay. And it's true that the, the STEM uh, designation, it's uh, is very, very convenient if you want to, to stay uh, in the US uh, to be able to exercise, practice, and also uh pay back your debts because an MBA is expensive and even though Diana got a scholarship she will have to to pay for his expenses okay so just make the MBA less expensive than what it is but still uh uh something expensive so basically what I what I like with, with Diana she was very very uh informed she had how many seminars have you attended like 50 easily how many have you attended yeah ah, yes yeah, yeah, like a lot like yes like a lot of seminars from different university i attend webinars i i decide to 
take a take a break in that job because I was working in Reckit. It was a very I love my my job, but really I could not have time to prepare for. You know, I have to took the IELTS exam. I I don't have I didn't have time for from from prepare from my application. So I decided to 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 have a break to have a six month break to prepare to get well prepared for my applications and and i decide yes i i decide to to take this break and i join my my work on november uh, but this in these six months i could work uh, really in in meeting people from different universities meeting a lot of alumni uh, attend a different events and if you attend this event you in most of the event you will have a application fee waiver because you attend to the event and you will receive a mail of that with a special code and that they give you a, a, a waiver for your application. Normally, the universities ask for a hundred dollars or a hundred and fifty dollars, I think, for application. It is an application but, fee that is yes, close to even two hundred dollars, so you already save eight hundred dollars, huh? Yes, I didn't pay for any application because I attend like multiple events and they gave me a, a fee application waivers, a fee application waiver. So I didn't pay for any application. Well, and that's something that they don't know, but in some of the school, many of the schools, by the way, if you attend a webinar, it's true that you get you get an application waiver. Okay, so at the end, uh, you 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 make two hundred two hundred dollars, which is uh, which is not bad. So you 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 gain uh, eight hundred dollars. Just in application waiver. Uh, so basically, now I'm going to ask questions because mm -hmm. I have, there are some students that I'm following. There is Marco, for instance. There is uh, there there are others who may ask questions. Huh, who are very interested and who are from Peru. Uh, Marco, hello, Marco. Hello, who are you? Marco. How are you? Nice to talk to you today. So we, we have worked uh, up this week. So Marco, what are, basically you are applying to the same school as uh, as Diana. Yes. Of the same time as Diana because uh, so he's applying, he's applying to the exact same school uh, for information Diana. Uh, well, he has sent his application by, by then. So uh, tell me, Marco, what, what are the questions that you have for for uh, Diana? Um, well, Diana, uh, Diana, first of all, thank you for sharing your your experience. Uh, it was very nice to hear. Uh, Different from, from you, I was working while making my application, so it was a big challenge, as you say. Uh, it, it's, it takes a lot of, of a time, effort, and a lot of things uh, extra from you. So, well, basically, I have already done my applications, and I would like to ask you, because I have already had one interview in Rochester. It was like three days after I uh, uploaded my application. I wish well, that you had told me, Ricardo, Marco, you would have prepared for the interview. I wish that you had told me. I'm sorry, what? Marco, I wish that you had told me, okay? Because we were supposed to prepare interviews together. I prepared the interviews with uh, Christiana. Uh, so tell me next time so that I prepare you for the interview. So, so and of what course, was the interview course. like, Marco? Uh, it was quite friendly, quite conversational. Um, they ask, ask me the, 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 I mean, the typical questions as uh, uh, walk me through your resume, um, why an MBA now, long term, short term uh, goals, um, why Rochester, and a situation where you apply teamwork, uh, what were the outcomes of that particular situation. Well, I will. Are you outside, well, I would like. Yeah, I'm sorry. Outside. Are you outside? Yes. Are you outside? Um, no? no, I am right now in my in a balcony because I am with COVID right now, and okay. yes, I have to be apart from my family. So okay. I went out to have this meeting because the final internet is good here. I'm sorry okay. if you are hearing any noises. No, no, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Okay. Um, well, uh, I would like to ask you, Diana, how was your experience? Uh, with the other universities in the, in, regarding the interviews. Uh, also, I would like to know uh, how many time it uh, went since you applied to all this university until they call you for the interview. And for example, in Rochester, I don't know if you finally got admitted, but... Uh, yes, I got admitted. Perfect. So 
how many time passed uh, since you made the interview until you got called for the for the offer? How was it? I mean, all the experience you can tell us from the moment you applied, and so they there then comes the interview and then the final decision. Yes, sure. It depends on the university. For for example, in Rochester, uh, I got my interview like one week after I applied. And they they release a decision, so they call me and they they say to me that you are admitted, like uh, three days before that that deadline uh, for this notice. So you will have you will find in the page the dates of that the re the release the release of the date. Like you will find in the in the page that information. No, uh, I don't I don't I don't remember from that. Maybe you apply for second round. I don't I don't know, but I apply like for first round. Yes, second and, round. Okay, and for first round, uh, the release date it uh, it was December fifteen. And they call me like uh, December the seven, I think, like one week uh, before that this final release date. But it's it passed like one month at least. And one month, no, three weeks, three weeks or one month between the my interview and the release date. But again, it depends of the the day that you will find in the page in the website, the day that they say release of the uh, of the of the re response if you're admitted or you're in wait list or whatever, you will find that day. So they call me like one one week before that final day. Perfect. Yes, and um, Marco, to get an answer at the latest uh, mid mid February, something like that. Okay. From the Perfect. February. So remember um, that with Diana, it took four to five. Usually, take four to five weeks before you get an answer. So mid mid February, you you will you will know probably. Yes, in like one month. Yeah. But it depends. But um, for the other university, it's like that. For all, it's like one month at least uh, between your application, your interview, and the release of the of the response of the university, if you're admitted or not. It's like one month. Yes, and the uh, um, the question that the university asks, uh, they are pretty similar. Except I will say Pennsylvania State, it was kind of different. But for all university, it was the same. Like uh, work through your your resume, your short, your mid. Uh, and long-term goal that a difficult situation you handle in, in, in your work. Uh, maybe example, how do you work uh, with a team uh, that you can show your leadership? Uh, yes, uh, basically that are the questions, uh, except I would say except Pennsylvania State because the interview was uh, longer. It was more than an hour and they gave me like 50 questions and, and all of them were cases. They don't say the typical question, what through your CV or, you know, uh, I would say that that was a, not harder, but maybe not like the same question as the other university. But for the others, it was the same question. I think the common questions. Uh, in Penn State, um, can you give us an example of what kind of questions were? Yes, for example, like if you were um, if you were the CEO of a company, or if you were the next I don't know manager, top manager in a company, uh, you just join this company. In which three aspects do you uh, start? Will start work uh, in the company? Which three aspects will be the more important for you to work in this company? You just started. And give me what uh, for you. What is that? The three point, the three principal points or aspect or areas that you will work uh, in this position. So tell me, Jana. Uh, by the way, what is the most awkward question that you have been asked? Is of course it, the interviews are pretty standard, but did you get a, an awkward question? Mm, I would say no, but uh, that this. For example, Pennsylvania State, yes, they ask like questions like cases, no uh, cases, and also they ask uh, more about uh, okay, what do you do a part of your work? Uh, how how do you you know like I talk about my volunteer experience because I am a volunteer. I'm also like a sport, and I am you know like uh, since I was a child, I, I practice as different sports, so I could tell these experiences. And yes, but other questions, I will say, mm, no, I have not, really have not. And did, uh, did they ask you about why you're asking a waiver, a waiver, a waiver request? Uh, 
No, because that information you put in your application, there is a, a part of the application uh, when you ask for a waiver and you have to attach, I say, explain, and this is a, I also work with Hubert. You have to explain in this essay why you are applying a waiver and why they give you a waiver. So here, basically, you have to, to explain your work experience and be sure that you are uh, addressing and you are uh, addressing the, the requirements of the university, especially the years of work experience they, they, they request. And then you have to explain your grades. If you, you have good grades, uh, it, I think that is important because uh, you have to demonstrate academic abilities. So explain that you are uh, have good grades, you are in the top 10 uh, in, your, in your university when you graduate. Uh, then explain if you have additional studies. In my case, I make a specialization in marketing, so I also address that information. Uh, okay. Yes, but basically, basically, you have to demonstrate in this essay that you are why you you are eligible for a GMAT waiver. Basically, your academic academic record and your work experience. And for example, I saw in the Penn State um, application that you needed a GPA grade and yes. a, a follow a following requirement. So since we don't have GPAs because we are different, um, we have a different curriculum. How did you manage that? No worries about that. Uh, you there are a lot of page in in in. I can share with you. There is a link that you convert your uh, your our actual scores that is between zero and twenty in a GPA, and you put that GPA in the website. So it's don't stress about that. You can do that in internet and but convert your GPA Marco, scale. Yeah. So you have already applied, Marco. You already sent your application, haven't you? Uh, no, to, to Penn State, I haven't applied yet because of this particular manner. Uh, I was going to talk to, to you guys, but to the other uni universities, I did. Okay, so basically, yes, what, what uh, uh, Diana is, is, is true about, huh? so sorry to interrupt you, Diana, Diana but it, no, it's it's, uh, what you say is correct, is that you have to, to write, um, you have to ask for a GMAT waiver, and uh, what happens is that uh, some school asks you to, to ask for the waiver before applying, okay? Like a Duke, uh, uh, Duke depending also, uh, some schools ask for, you need to ask to, to ask the permission to waive the GMAT, and others, you just put it. But in your case, Marco, we, wrote, we put the, the GMAT waiver essay, remember, in the optional essay. Huh? Diana, we put it in the optional essay. So, uh, no, there is somewhere. not. No, there is a specific uh, field in application that say um, if you are applying for GMAT uh, waiver, explain here. I think it's up to a hundred words. I, I'm I'm not pretty sure, but I think because that. You put it in the optional essay. You see, we put it in the optional essay. Did, did you uh, did you check, uh, Marco? We put, we put, we made it as an optional essay the waiver. Okay, maybe you should have put it in this uh, specific section. Huh? Yes. Hello? Yes, I did. I did. I have already checked it. I know exactly how yeah, I, I, how to do it. it yeah, I was we put it in the decision. I put it in the optional essay. But yes, I don't know exactly. So fortunately, you put it in the. So basically, yes, for all tools who are applying, as you know, basically to give you a, a, a big picture. So uh, two years ago, yes, when we will have applied before the the the, the COVID the breaks out. There was only the GMAT, okay? So two years ago, we we'll have, we'll have need the GMAT with a... Uh, and then they, they realized that without asking the GMAT, now they have more applicants. The applicants are so quality applicants. So basically, the, yeah, you have three types of schools. You have schools that still ask for the GMAT. Then you have schools that ask for the EA, the Executive Assessment Test, something that we wanted to try with the Diana. And then we found out that basically the school that accept for the EA and the school that give you the GMAT waiver are roughly the same. And then scoop schools that give you a GMAT waiver. Uh, okay, sometimes you need to ask for a waiver. By the way, Diana, you have to see that some people are refused the waiver. Huh? And it's not because of their backgrounds, it's usually because of the nationalities. Okay. So for instance, you have to see that most Indians are refused the waivers because there are already so many Indians applicants that they want to put this like of a uh, hurdle uh, before applying. And then you ask for the waiver. So some school ask you to write, others they have a specific section, or you can put it to the optional essay. It depends. It depends on the school, you see, Anna. Anna. And uh, have you been uh, waived the GMAT at all the schools you have applied to, Jana, or not? I, I forgot. 
they would have waived you the GMAT? Yes, uh, in Fisher and Rochester, I sent my request for GMAT waiver and they replied to me uh, saying, ah, I also want to mention something. I applied also to UNC, University of North Carolina. I also received my approval from GMAT waiver from these three universities. They replied to say, okay, your GMAT waiver are approved. And then uh, was the next part of the of the application. No, uh, in the case uh, of of Rochester and Fisher, uh, they immediately start reviewing my application, and I received my invitation for interview in one week. Uh, and in UNC, I, I am on wait list, and I I particular I like the university, but I also I received an admission from the from this four university, and yeah. it was very difficult to wait until uh, the wait list responds, and maybe I will lose these opportunities to enroll in this university. So I decide to take a decision with the four that give me the the the, the admission. But yes, I received okay. a confirmation of the GMAT waiver for the university. In the case of Penn State, it was part of the application. I mean, I apply and they say check in your GMAT because they they accept my GMAT waiver. But yes, as Hubert said, they review if you have the if you have the requirement. They asking for the GMAT and maybe other things that I I, I have in the not. case of uh, Jenna, they give her with a waiver because she's an engineer. She speaks English well. Uh, she worked, she had responsibilities, position of responsibilities uh, at her, manager, at her work. Yes, I uh, she's that. also from South America, so she's a bit, uh, so, somehow a minority because uh, they, they need also probably more students from South America. So for all these reasons, they give her, they give her a waiver. Uh, of course, in, in your case, Marco, you need to, to get one as well because uh, you, uh, you, cannot, uh, you cannot wait for more. Huh? Yes, uh, I have already uh, get um, the UNC. Um, no, I just wanted to tell that I have already uh, uh, been. Re I have already um, received the GMAT waiver from UNC, um, from Simon Rochester as well. Uh, but of course, I don't have uh, any news uh, regarding my. Yeah, because you have applied uh, early this week. So basically, Marco, when you have an interview, you have to prepare uh, with me. Huh? That's what we have done with, with Jana. Remember that every time Jana had an interview, we had to do uh, two years, three years together because I said, well, no, you already had like two or three, you know what to answer, but she wanted so even 30 minutes, okay? So every time we had an interview prep and it worked uh, pretty well. Uh, yes, I prepare, question, for, Sorry? I prepare for all the interviews. Like okay. even if I know that is maybe the same questions, I, I prepare because my suggestion is to learn about the university and get involved. If you really like the university, eh, eh, try to reach out to students, alumni, and get involved with the university because all the university will ask to you, why this school? Why did we this school? And you need to show that obviously you are you, you do your homework and you get involved about the university and you really have to demonstrate that you really want to get into the university so and um, i i think it's important to to get involved about the culture and to reach out to students uh, alumni from the different university yeah it, it's it's uh, it's uh, it's very important and of course it's very important to to be prepared and to show your your motivation do you have any other question marco hello no 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 uh, it's okay thank you very much diana the information well, basically there's, there's another student so there are other students who are here uh so for instance where is ricardo ah, he left already uh yes, he, yeah, he, left. He, he left okay but he's, I mean, he's going to ask me a question so i'm going to leave so there's isabel uh isabel for instance uh you have a question for us isabel hello isabel hello isabel mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, good morning. What is um, your yes. the background, Isabel? And what are the questions that you have for us? Please tell us. Well, as I was really surprised when I entered here because I am also industrial engineer from University of Lima. Right. Um, yeah. um, two years ago, I was looking for a, getting an MBA in an international university. I'm right now living in Peru. Um, but due to COVID and everything, um, that goal postponed. Um, at the moment, well, like five months ago, I was considering uh, studying my MBA here in Peru, but I 
talked to my boss and he told me that um, it was better to maybe invest more time and in my application and be a candidate for an international MBA. Um, so as Diana, I am an industrial engineer. I'm also for univers uh, from University of Lima. And at this very moment, I'm looking for universities. Uh, I have also uh, looked at the ranking. And Wharton is is one of my is one of the universities that I'm I'm really interested in. Uh, but as as well as the NH, as it sometimes seems difficult um, be because of, of all the costs and everything that involves. So at this very moment I'm getting inform as much as much as information as I can so I can maybe be candidate for a waiver, full, tu full tuition waiver also. So basically, Isabel, you, you understand? So for instance, uh, Wharton will never give you a, a waiver. Huh? Uh, so basically, you, you have to, what happened, there's Nelly is not there as well. So basically, people, what happens is that they try, they try the GMAT, they see how well they do. Of course, if you don't get a score above 700, it doesn't make much sense, OK? And if you get a score like in the 650, 660, I suggest that you try European programs uh, such as LBS, HEC, IEC, uh, in SEAD. They, 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 they would, they, I think that these programs will take a woman from, uh, from Peru with a 650. And if it doesn't work, then you can try the EA or try the waiver. Basically, uh, today, Isabel, it's very difficult that you apply for this year. We will most likely apply for September 2000, uh, you will send your application in September 2022 to start in 23, okay? Uh, because most of the schools now you're on round three and it's very difficult to get on round three. Uh, Wharton, for instance, does not even recommend yeah. international applicant to apply to round three, but they will most likely not take you because they, they may fear that you cannot even start the, the program. Uh, so probably the best is to wait now until September 2022. Uh, and then see what it gives. If you get a 750, get work done. If you get a 650, try and say If you don't get any GMAT at all, uh, uh, ask for, uh, try the EA or ask for a waiver. I think that that life will tell you what you have to, where you have to go. You agree, huh? uh, Jenna? You have to be very, um, how can I say, uh, pragmatic. Yeah. yeah? I I will say like if, if you put, if, if you let me guys give you an advice, I am the person who will if you work hard for what you want, you will achieve that. And also like all of us have different realities and have different expectations. Um for example, I'm in my I in my theories. I, I'm not look like theory, I'm not, but I but I'm in my theory, so I don't have really too much time to get prepared for a gym mat. And I and I think I have a well valuable ex work experience. And I highlight that in my applications. And I think that it, that is the reason that I look for university that I'm accepting GMAT the waiver, because I know that they have a valuable work experience and university appreciate, also appreciate that. But I'm the person who see that what uh, look and find what you really want, uh, want in this moment. If you want to apply to a top school, I think that you will, you will achieve that for sure. But in my case, I have a different reality. I don't have too much time to prepare for the GMAT. I'm looking for a scholarship and I want my specialization in supply chain. So I decide, I look the university because of what I really want. So I think that is something very important. And I want, if you if you allow me to give my advice to you, that is, will be my advice. Everyone has different careers. Everyone has different aspirations. and. You really will find what you really want and work work hard in that and, and you will achieve that. It's it's not impossible. Look like the very difficult getting the American university, but if you work hard, like you were know like I were very happy my essays, letters of recommendation, my IELTS exam and all of this, you will achieve. Like it's not impossible. Yeah, yeah it's true. Um, it's true that sorry not put into into but you yes. know that when we see a student and uh, uh, Diana was still a student like two, two, two months ago. She was still a student and uh, very worried with no, with no acceptance anywhere, uh, like two months ago, not even interviews. Okay. And it's normal because, of course, you, you need some time. She, she sent her application in October. So 
uh, you don't get an answer uh, immediately. And what I want to say is that is that after that they give a seminar and students tell me, but oh yes, but Diana or, or Roberto or Carlo is outstanding. They, they took him and said, but six months ago he was in your situation or he was in your situation. She's not better, she's not worse, etc. cetera. You, you visit him in the league. And simply uh, Diana uh, made the effort to, to get in, of course, she, she, she worked out for it, okay? She took uh, 10 months off to attend the webinar, to, to get to know the people, to attend fairs, to, but she was very busy. Uh, and finally, look, she gets uh, an MBA uh, in the rank in the top 100 of the FT, an MBA, full scholarship, probably with STEM program, okay? Which she can work uh, and study, uh, probably uh, up to three years in the US. So finally, she made the effort, and now the reward is uh, is big. Huh? You agree? So it's the same. So yes, Marco, your question. Uh no, you can probably answer my question. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know. You see, uh, Jenna, he didn't want to miss the, this seminar, even though he's uh, he's very sick. You know, uh, he went outside. Probably that's why we cannot hear very well, and uh, he didn't want to miss this seminar at any price. Um, there's Cathy Rosado. I don't know who you are, Cathy. We probably we invited you to this webinar. So, Cathy, uh, Cathy, who are you and what are your questions? Hi, everyone. Hi, yeah. Dr. Hubert. Hi, Diana. Thank you for sharing your experience. You know Cathy? Also. You know Cathy? Yeah. You know Cathy? No, 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 we don't know. I'm new. Not yet. Uh, well, I, I will tell I don't know if I'm new, new, but uh, I wanted to... Uh, well, about my, uh, myself, I wanted to apply an MBA, but I wanted to apply last year, so that's why uh, uh, maybe I, I I have been in some of these webinars. But in the in the process of well, while uh, in the last years, I have many um, troubles, many things that uh, that I finally I decided to postpone my preparation for this year. You no, know? and one of the things is, is that I was um, there were changes in my work. No, at my uh, and and I decide and I thought that I maybe I got like a better upgrade of my position, but then I got that upgrade, but not in the way that I wanted. So I decided that it was better to like take this you not know, to 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 continue with my MBA preparation because I think that it will give me more more um, experience. It would uh, add more for my for, for me, no. So that's why I am now like continue with my preparations. I wanted to apply in for 2023, no. And just uh, as, uh, listening to to Diana and her experience, I wanted to ask about how the uh, the how does she uh, I don't know um, support or not her, uh, or argument <laughs> her her uh, GMAT waiver because right now. Or in the last year that I want that I was also studying, uh, I had like travels with Gilman, but I also have a good um, uh, experience, job experience. You no, know? so I, for example, right now I'm, I am manager. Uh, I have like uh, five, four people you now that that report to me, and it, I mean, is that's a good experience and uh, that's that's good, you no? Know? But I don't know how to to. To rep uh, how to translate it, no, and to to to, to tell the, the the universities and con that this is the, that I got a good that I good uh, experience that I can support that, and also uh, I wanted to ask Diana how um, how does she connect with the people from the, the those universities, no, because for example right now I'm really into MIT I really want it because maybe because I am a system engineer. <laughs> That's my background. I also studied uh, at University of Lima, no? and and it's like I, I my 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 professional um, how to say my my all, all my prof uh, all my jobs is related to finance. It's it's really funny because I'm system engineer and all my my experience is about finance and planning and commercial. No, I oh, I work at bank. No, and uh, uh, and I, that's why I really want MIT. No, so I I also have. I also uh, have uh, like investigating the people who 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 is in MIT. I just wanted to connect, but I don't know how. No, it's like I know that people. I know that 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 uh, that's a person that 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 uh, that is uh, that's from Peru. That maybe I can connect, but I don't know how. 
No? So, I, 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 I know just... people I know people in my company, so maybe if you write me, I can introduce you to them so you can talk to them. And can I? That would be perfect. That, yes. that would be perfect. No? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And also yeah. we say LinkedIn is your best friend. I connect all the people uh, from LinkedIn, really. I uh, put the name of the university and I also try to find Peruvian people, but also people from other country because it's important to, to know like different experience. And um, yes, LinkedIn is your best friend. You will find, uh, I also I also know one girl of my, of my university that she just entered into MIT last year. I can connect with you. But yes, uh, try to, to write LinkedIn. Maybe uh, not all the people will reply to your message, but most of them, yes, for sure they will. They will do. Really, I get uh, a lot of acceptance in this message. I, I, the people reply to me, and I can introduce myself, and I can have a meeting with them, a Zoom meeting, or talk with by WhatsApp or whatever. So yes, I, I will suggest to try LinkedIn. And the second question um, about that GMAT waiver. Um, uh, try to look the requirements of the university. Maybe, uh, as Hubert said, the top business school, I, I find uh, pretty difficult to they give you a GMAT waiver because they, they receive a huge number of applications. But if you look uh, to the tier 20, between 20 and 14, yes, you will find options. And you have to demonstrate and highlight your work experience as well as your academic, the academic uh, background. Uh, for example, if you have a good grade, if you are in the top uh, 10 of the university, you all that information you should write in the site, and Hubert will help you, help you with that, because they will they they will look at your CV, at your resume, and your grades, and they say highlight this, highlight that. Hubert help me to to do this essay. Uh, it's my information. It's it's also it's my information, and you know that anyone. <laughs> Else, uh, how 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 what your your history at the, at the university, your background experience at work, but all that the the rainstorm that you can do with that information, Hubert would help you to draft uh, in a essay and finally uh, have a great essay to to uh, from apply to the university and they can give you the GMAT waiver. Yes, because uh, I I mean. I am, um, it's like I don't have to, uh, that all the time of, of because I'm working also, no? So to to prepare to GMA take a lot of time. And also I don't want to like, um, I want to do my work good, no? Because when you're doing the two things at the same time, you have, that maybe you do something that, that your work is not good, no? And it's something that I don't feel right. I don't feel it is right. So yes. if there no. is an opportunity to to take that, this waiver, and, and I don't think that my work is bad because I'm, I'm right now, they, I got promoted, so uh, I want to take advantage of me from that, no? Also, I, I will take the chance again with the team, no? because maybe there are some universities that they wanted, no? And I also read that that in some cases, no, uh, it's good not to have it, no? Yes, no, also, yes. And, and also, I am, yeah, and yes, also I, I, am, I am at my 30s. <laughs> no, it's, it's not like also I look like I'm 30. But it's like it, it's like I see. Also, uh, that was one uh, my, of my concerns because m most of the um, MBA suppliers are are like in 25. You no, know, that that's the, the range. And right now I'm like 30s, and I'm and it's that was uh, first my concern. No, maybe I'm too late. But then I got um, it. It was my concern too. But uh, no worry, you will find people of different. Uh, uh, really, the average age from the most university that apply it was between 29, 28, and 29. And you will find people from different age. Really, it's, it's no matter about that. You don't have to worry about that. But yes, I try. If you want to try the gym, I would say try the gym. As you were saying, uh, you have another opportunity maybe if you are running out of time and you want to start your MBA early, like apply with Gimel Waiver. But yes, there are many options. I will say take the GMA. I, I'm going to take the GMA in some moment of, of my life because I also get prepared, but I, I will. I, I need to start my MBA because it was my goal like since for three, three years ago, four or three years ago. Yes, I, 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 I understand your, your, so, so I, I mean your, your situation uh, because it's very similar. Like I, I have. Huh? Katie, you, you have to be, uh, you have to be, um, how can I say? You have to be pragmatic, okay? You, you try the GMAT, you see if it works, if it doesn't work. You try the EA, if it doesn't work, you try the, the, the waiver. And of course, this year, what I want to say is that it's not obvious that the waiver is going to stay. 
Because of course, the problem that they have, if, if, they, if you ask them how they justify that they give waiver, they see because they want to give equal opportunity to students. And as you know, in many countries, they are closing a test center. Uh, some people cannot take the test from home, so they give you waiver because they, they want to, to, to put uh, everybody equal. But imagine that uh, the COVID vanish uh, this year, okay? Uh, they may say for next year that there's no, there's no more waiver, okay? And they can uh, make the GMAT compulsory again. Huh? So basically this year, you can try because there will still be waivers, but I cannot guarantee that in late 22, early 2023, there will still be waivers. Huh? Uh, once the COVID, the, the situation is, is, is sorted out, there will be no more waiver. Huh? Okay, so, so yes, hurry up. Huh? And plus, since you have no GMAT to prepare, the most important, uh, the longest, uh, the, the, the most consuming part of the GMAT, of the preparation is the GMAT. So preparing the application in one month and a half, so we can be ready for March. If we start now, by March, we'll be ready. Huh? You see, by late February, early March, we can be ready because in six weeks, you can complete the application, okay? Uh, with, with Marco, by the way, we went pretty fast. Uh, Marco, remember? Uh, we went pretty fast with the application, okay? So, so same thing. So you can, uh, don't waste time because the, the situation may, sh may change next year. You see, Patty? Yes, and, and Hubert, I want, sorry to interruption, but I want to, in a, in a webinar of Boston University, they say, this year, the GMAT is not a requirement, but we don't know that next year if it's going to be a requirement or not. Yeah, they highlight that. Uh, I, I have a technical question for you, Diana, before the this meeting ends. Have you been asked for an international company to validate your transcripts? No. I am, no, a, because... I am applying to Cornell, Cornell Tech and they have asked me that it was a really frustrating situation because I didn't know um, what documents they need but finally I, I, I now know but I was I was going to ask you if you had that experience to share it with me but you, you, you didn't have it so it's okay no but but many of the students also use WES uh, but the university that I apply they have no requirement for for a uh, translation in my trust, you don't know, because they have a system or the university, they explain to us they have a system and they can look for the university of all the university around the world in their system and they can look at your grade and they can have idea if you, how you, how your grade is compared to a 4.0 scale. So Perfect. you don't need really to transcribe. I would say you don't need to transcribe. Uh, I don't know about Cornell, I have not applied to Cornell, but for the university that I applied, they not required to a translation uh, only in English, no? You have to a translation in English, yes, of course, but not a, a comparison. Uh, you did, you did a, a certificate translation or, or re official with the seal of the ministry translation? How do you do? No, I translate with any. Uh, I mean, I have a content I can share with you, but no, I really did as a, a certificate translator. Yeah, yes, yes that's for sure. I did, but no well. specific one. Okay, perfect, perfect. I use the Gma Dudes translator. Oh, that, that's, that's okay. Yes, okay. okay. So you can, you can use one. So basically, yes, what happens is that now they have what we call uh, self-reported uh, transcript, okay? So step one, you self-report your transcript, okay? And then if you get accepted, they will ask you for an official transcript, okay? That you have to, to get from an official translator. Now, some universities, I don't know how it works at the University of Peru, can give you an official transcript in English. They, they cannot give you that. Yeah. No. For example, like Penn, Penn, Pennsylvania State, uh, I, I, also, I, I just enrolled to the university and they asked the university sent to the electronic email of Pennsylvania State my transcript in English. So I already, I already contact the University of Lima. I, I reach out to them. Uh, they are on, on vacation until uh, this Monday. And they directly sent from the inbox uh, of University of Lima, from the, you know, the account of University of Lima to the account of Pennsylvania State, my trust. That is a requirement to be enrolled to the university. But that, that was uh, told you be, uh, after uh, you got accepted? Yes. Okay, okay, nice, nice to know. No, for application, for application only uh, translate to English your, your transcript and upload that information. Okay, perfect. I think I, I did a good job there. <laughs> yeah, exactly.
So, Diana, it was uh, very nice. Probably I will interview you as well so that more people can, can see about you and can share your experience. So, basically, so Diana is one of the first students that I got who, who, uh, who yes, I think the first one that I got was used a GMAT waiver and been accepted without the GMAT. Because before, last year, I had students accepted to Duke, uh, NYU, who had to take the executive assessment test. Uh, so, of course, it's a great news. So now I know that Nelly uh, one man has applied without it. So basically, there's a breakthrough. And it's important that we show you someone who has used the GMAT waiver process uh, to show it's possible, okay? So I'm sure that uh, both uh, Isabel, uh, Cathy uh, can, uh, can take advantage of this. But now, of course, if you want to apply for 2022, uh, for the 2022 intake, you have to hurry up. Huh? We have... Uh, we have less than two months to be ready, huh? okay? Uh, otherwise, it will be next year. Huh? Okay. It's not a big deal. But uh, but if, you, if you're interested in such schools as UNC, Fisher, BU, Rochester, maybe get your chance now, okay? Thank you very much, Jenna. So your last uh, piece of advice, what would it be? Last piece of advice, Jenna. Like, I would say be yourself. It's something that really universities uh, is important for the university. Be yourself, be authentic, and uh, go for your dreams. I would say if you go, if you want, like Cathy say, go to the MIT, I would say you will got it. Uh, I also say like everyone have different realities, so everyone's expectations are different, but whatever you want, you will, you will achieve for sure. Uh, um, get well prepared for the interview because all the university that I pass interview, uh, I got an admission, and I really, I really think I did. I pre I feel very confident at the at, at the moment of the interview, and I think I could demonstrate my experience. I could demonstrate what uh, who is Diana. I could demonstrate what I want to go to that university. I uh, also be energetic, like be uh, demonstrate a lot of energy. Like university really like this. Uh, and be yourself because I, I was myself, I was authentic and my result of, of my interviews I think was very good for all of them. I received a scholarship in all the universities and it's also possible um, but I chose uh, Pennsylvania State as I told you because they gave me a full tuition waiver and in addition it's a top school of supply chain that is it's what i really want so yes that is my my last piece of advice i'm going to to put here my whatsapp number in case you want to reach out to me uh, to know i don't know more questions or something uh, you have doubts please reach out to me i'm going to be glad to to answer your questions it's very good huh sure. and thank anyway, you marco you can also ask me because you're my student and I can put you in contact with uh, with uh, with Diana as well. Huh? Yes, of course. Thank you. Um, also, we'd like to to say uh, to all the the people here that don't stress too much. Uh, enjoy the process because I did stress a lot, and I th I think I could have enjoyed more. So that's basically it. And communicate a lot with your coach. Yes, and that's you important. Enjoy your, enjoy your process because you will pass this only one time. It's, a, it's maybe uh, overwhelming, I will say, the correct word, <laughs> because yes, like the says, the exams, uh, the scores of the universities and what all the requirements, yes, for sure. I decide to take a break, in, break in my job, five months break. But it's it, it what I, I it was needed for me, you know, like to complete. It was very challenging for me, and my work it was also very demanded. So I decided to take this five month break only to concentrate in my application, and finally I got what I really want. So I'm not regret about that decision. And I, I, I'm working right now until June or June maybe. But yes, enjoy the process. That is something important, and and reach out the most people that you can it will help you for sure. So thank you very much, Jenna. Thank you very much. Oh, One hour with us, you know, it was very nice. So we got a few people. So thank you, Marco. Thank you, Cathy. Uh, thank you, Isabel, for, for visiting us. And I, I look forward to, to working with you pretty soon. Thank you. Thank you again. Thank Jenna. you. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Yeah, Happy New Year. Happy New Year, by the way. Bye. Bye. Happy New Year. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Happy thank New Year. Thank you. 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 Thank